breaking Baltimore Ravens news coming at you guys. I am Tom Downey here to break down the Sean Wade trade. The now former Ravens cornerback has been shipped out to the New England Patriots. The Ravens are getting rid of Sean Wade on the verge of roster cuts becoming finalized next Tuesday. The Ravens spent a fifth round pick on Sean Wade after a very disappointing 2020 season for Ohio State after being hyped as a potential first round pick. It appears based on this trade that Wade was not going to make the 53-man roster. Despite that, the Ravens actually got pretty good value in this Sean Wade trade. The Patriots, of course, they're the ones getting Sean Wade, who I assume will end up making their 53-man roster. The Ravens are getting back a seventh-round pick this year and a 2023 fifth-round pick next year. Now, reminder here. In general, NFL teams value future draft picks in terms of like the next upcoming year, that 2023, as a round less than the current one. So you could almost approach it as a sixth and a seventh, which isn't that much of a difference than the mid-fifth round pick the Ravens spent on Sean Wade initially. So this does make me think there was some interest in Sean Wade. They were never going to get back a fifth round pick this year, I don't think. But they come pretty damn close to it. Overall, a pretty good return for a player who, it appears, was not going to make the 53-man roster. So give me your one-word reaction to this Sean Wade trade. The rumors had picked up leading up to the actual trade. It was about an hour ago that the initial reported that the Ravens were having trade talks. Patriots jump in, end up landing him. Give me your one-word reaction in the comments section. Maybe value's a decent one because the Ravens aren't selling that low on Sean Wade who made some decent plays in the preseason. I will make note in general here about Sean Wade who I thought could have been this team's backup nickel corner. The stock of Sean Wade underwent one of the biggest drops we've seen outside of like a Vontez Burfitt, for example, or Sean Oakman, for example. In 2019, I thought Sean Wade was the second best corner on Ohio State. I thought he was better than Damon Arnett, not as good as Jeffrey Okuda. And Wade was good in eight games, 2019, you know, decent completion percentage, pretty solid there, under six minutes, a good figure, only 261 yards, one touchdown allowed, one interception, eight pass breakups. You wanted to see more plays in the ball, more takeaways after seeing him in kind of a nickel hybrid safety role. And then Wade moves outside in 2020. And yes, he did pick off more inter more passes, two of them, somehow was a first-team All-American, proving, by the way, that college football All-American voters literally do not pay attention to what is going on in college football because Sean Wade was terrible. He was the only FBS player to allow 30 or more completions at a 64% rate, by the way, over 500 yards and six or more touchdowns. Now, he had a foot issue that was a, that was a problem for him that he had surgery on after uh, the season. Maybe that was a problem. He had uh, a toe injury, to be exact, there. But he never looked comfortable on the outside. He went from a potential first-round pick to a mid-day three guy. As for the Ravens themselves, the cornerback room is very much taking shape. I think they end up carrying six. Obviously, Marcus Peters, Marlon Humphrey, Jimmy Smith are roster locks. I think it's a good uh, spot now for Anthony Averett. Chris Resser go more in-depth on him, Tavon Young, and Westry here in a little bit. I will make another note here, by the way. I put Ardarius Washington at nickel corner because we didn't have enough safety spots, but he's been playing safety for the Ravens. We'll see if he ends up making that team's 53-man roster. Now, more on the Ravens coming up, so stick around here. But this is why you guys subscribe. I'm trying to make this Ravens channel a full-time one here at Chat Sports. So if you want more Ravens videos, news, rumors, trades, roster stuff, previews, game recaps, all that good stuff, hit that big red button and subscribe. Still a long way to go to catch up to the Steelers and Browns channels here, but I think we can get there. So if you haven't already, hit that big red button and subscribe today. Now the trade of Sean Wade makes it very clear Taven Young is being counted on heavily. 
the team's very talented and quality nickel corner has not been healthy in recent years, and that is a problem. With Sean Wade gone, this to me is another indication that the Ravens feel very good about the health of Tavon Young in terms of having to lean to maybe an Anthony Averett or maybe one of those safeties down into the nickel corner role. I hope and think that Young ends up being healthy for the entirety of the 2021 campaign. Now, with Wade's trade, I do think this clears room on the roster for Chris Westry, the former Dallas Cowboys corner. New regime comes in. They cut him. The Ravens pick him up. He's had a very strong, in terms of praise, training camp so far. So I think Peters, Humphrey, Young, Averett, uh, Jimmy Smith, and I think Chris Westry, in addition to Tavon Young, end up being the corners on this team. Now, maybe I end up being wrong there, but as long as Westry st stays healthy, I think his emergence has given him a roster spot over Sean Wade. So factoring in, potentially finding a way to keep Westry on your roster. What you got back, a pretty good return for Sean Wade. Grade this for me. A, B, C, D, or F. Now, if you wanted to keep Sean Wade, I get that. Maybe you'll grade it a little bit lower. But I think based only on the value the Ravens got back, given that draft picks are kind of like a car, once you drive it off the lot, it plummets in value. Getting back a future fifth and a seventh is actually very, very good value for the Baltimore Ravens. I say well done, at least a B from that perspective for Baltimore. One other trade rumor that I want to mention here as well is a potential trade of yet another kicker, Jake Verity, the now former ECU product there. Justin Tucker has hyped him up. No team in the NFL has done a better job of developing the backup kicker than the Baltimore Ravens have. Of course, they had the, the Jets trade I think last year, the before that, whatever it was, ended up being a disaster. Uh, because it just wasn't good at all. I'm trying to blank on his name here. I'll get it pulled up in a second. The, uh, oh, God, what was it? I'll, I'll remember it eventually. But Jake Verity allegedly is drawing some trade interest here in terms of a potential. Oh, uh, Kerry Vedovic, which was actually the Ravens-Vikings trade, and then the Jets picked him up, and he ended up not lasting at all. We'll see if the, Ra if the Ravens actually trade this kicker. You saw the Giants trade one for a conditional seventh-round pick. My suspicion is that might be what the value is. If he does get waived, keep an eye on for somebody claiming him around roster cutdown time.